Welcome to Probability Density Functions. This is part of a Bayesian statistics course at Virginia Commonwealth University. We're going to start off where we left off last time, which is the cumulative distribution function. Remember, continuous random variables are difficult to deal with, so we decided, well, what if we change the way we look at things in terms of a cumulative distribution instead of looking at individual values directly? And um, this, this red line here is going to represent the population. So how can we think about one value, though? Because often we want to think about individual values, not ranges of values. Um, one way to think about this is the probability of a continuous random variable at a point is how much is the CDF changing at that point? And you'll see why this makes sense as we go through this, because once you understand how much how the CDF is changing, you can start thinking about things in terms of likelihood. All right, so this is easy to calculate. Um, if you have you want to know the probability that X is between A and B, that's just the probability that X is less than B, minus the probability that X X is less than A, which is F of B minus F of A. And remember, capital F of B and capital F of A. These capital Fs are the CDFs. All right, so here's the following CDF. Notice it's near zero down here, which means these points are extremely unlikely to have points less than those. Extremely unlikely to see observations less than those. Uh, and then up here, it's near one, which means we're extremely likely to see observations less than that. And notice I keep having to say less than that, so it, it's difficult. But let's say I'm interested in the value four. Okay, so if I plug in four, I'll see that if when I get the answer out here, it's 0.5384. This is the probability that X is less than or equal to four. So, well, what if we put some bands around this? Okay, because remember, we're interested in the D CDF near the value we're interested in. Well, if I were to do that and put these bounds out here, now I want to know, well, what's the probability of being between between the two bounds versus just being at a specific point. Right now we have what's at a specific point, but I'm interested in what about between them. So this region here. Well, if I calculate this, I would find that it's 0 0.3342. Okay, so uh, this is the probability that X is between three and a half and four and a half. Okay, so I'm gonna add another one on here. Okay, because I want you to see how what ends up being the steepness of this curve, how steep it is right here, is going to really affect these probabilities. And I put the probability here in red to correspond to the red curve, and there'll be a probability in blue corresponding to the blue curve. All right, so if I look exactly the same curves, or I mean exactly the same curves I have here, with exactly the same X bounds, I see that this one is 0 0.3342, and this one is 0 0.5781. So you, the probability is higher here of being between 3.5 and 4.5 than it is the probability being between 3.5 and 4.5 on the red curve. Now, if I shrink this down, now notice I said I'm interested in near 4. Okay, so I went 3.5. What if I went to 3.75 and 4.25? Well, notice that things shrink down over here. You can see these arrows got a little bit shorter. Uh, and we notice over here that this probability dropped off dramatically, and so did this one. But this one's still higher than that one, and that has to do with the steepness. We can get even closer. We can go to 3.9 and 4.1. Uh, and notice that now we're at 0 0.0685 for the red, but the blue is still 0 0.1253. So it's almost twice the probability that the red one is. Okay, and then I can get really, really close. And I can see that on this really close one, I have 0 0.006. And over here I have 0 0.0125. And notice that this one is about twice as much as that one. And what I'm trying to get across here is when we start looking at these, uh, what are going to be probability density functions, we're really looking to see how is the probability changing on this axis as we change uh, the, the x value on this axis, specifically moving towards a specific point. Okay, so this is what we've been doing. We've been saying, well, what is the probability as A and B get closer and closer together? That was what we did. 
Uh, if you want to run through it in pictures real quick, we can say, here we are, and we move closer, 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 and now we're interested in this. So we want to look at the ratio. Well, how much did the probability change over how much did X change? Okay, so you could write this as F of B over F of A, or F of B minus F of A over B minus A. And if I stare at this, this is something I've seen before. This is the slope of the CDF of F. Okay, the CDF here. It's a slope, okay? Well, we can let A and B get closer and closer and closer because that's what we were doing. We were squeezing it in. And we can write it like this, okay? And if I write it like this, this can be written as a derivative. That's exactly what it is here. The derivative of F becomes this function, little f of x, where, and then here I would just put in here for completeness to say that it's going to be at an x that's between a and b. This would be the derivative, and this derivative here is the probability density function. And you're like, wait, wait a minute, hold on, you lost me. I didn't lose you. It's exactly the same thing as we looked at up here. It's the slope of the CDF. It's how fast the probabilities are changing in that region. And if the probability uh, is changing faster, then that means more of the probability is in that region. We just saw that with a steep curve. The steep curve is changing faster than the red curve. So there's more probability in that tiny region around that point. All right, so what I did is I took our two CDFs and turned them into PDFs. And you can look here and see what they look like. Okay, notice they come back down to zero as they should, because if you remember where we were at the top, it wasn't changing much, right? Here it's not changing much, right? It's near zero change. Out here it's near zero change. All the change is occurring in the middle. Okay, let me come back down here. So no change there, no change there, a lot of change here in the middle. And most of the change is concentrated in different regions. So that's what these are showing me. And the high here does not correspond to probability. It corresponds to what's called density or how fast the thing is changing. But you can think of this as likelihood. Okay, because remember we were talking about, look, the probability of this one is about twice the probability of the other one. So this is the idea of it's like twice as likely to be one of these than the other. And so, because here, if you look, the blue density is almost twice as high as the red density. And so we could say that uh, for x equals 4, it's more than twice as likely on the blue density than on the red density. And this is going to become really, really important later because we're going to have to specify prior distributions. And we need to be able to think about PDFs and we need to think about what they are and what likelihood means. Uh, for completeness sake here, uh, if we have a PDF, we can find probabilities from this but just by using calculus, right? We can integrate it. We'll end up with f of x. And if we're in between two points, we can still integrate that as well. Um, I'm going to point out here there's no escaping calculus here. But for the most part, we're going to, let's just say, dodge calculus. We're going to still use it, but we're not going to see it in the way that you maybe saw it in math class. All right, so probability density functions are really important in Bayesian statistics, as we shall soon see, because in our next video, we're going to start talking about some different types of experiments and what kind of prior information we might have about them. And when we specify our prior information, we're going to be specifying it as a probability density function. So keep that in mind, and I'll see you there.